It is October, and as you all know, it is Clovernut Center's Meet the Blind Month. And today we are here with yet another exceptional gentleman. Uh, sir, would you like to introduce yourself and give us your job title? Uh, yes, my name is Kim McEatron, and I'm a proofreader with Transcription in Clovernut Center for the Blind. Okay. Um, would you like to talk to us about your day-to-day -day duties at Clovernut Center? Well, my day-to-day -day duties mostly involve uh, proofreading, where I'm sitting across from a person who has printed material. We call that person a copy holder, and I am a proofreader. And what we do is I compare the print to the Braille, and between the two of us, we make sure that everything is written properly, aligned properly, so that we can go through uh, at least the first stages of getting information out to our patrons. We start first with the transcription area and then come to our proofreader and our copy holders, and then we move on to a second stage from there. And if you wish, I can talk to you about that second stage. And that second stage involves um, where I do seconds. After things are uh, read by the proofreader and the copy holder, it goes back to the transcriber, then the transcriber sends it to a person such as myself who does what is called a second read. And that second read we get a chance to eliminate errors that we didn't catch during the first read. And then from that point on, everything goes back to the transcriber and then it goes on to the printers. And I even have something to do with that as well. When uh, the books are, before they actually sent out to our patrons, we have to check the pages to make sure everything is correct. We make sure that the writing is correct, then we make sure that the pages are correct, and I'm even working on that end as well. And, then, and after that is done, finally, items are shipped and uh, sent to our patrons. I love the fact that uh, transcription displays a common theme, which is quality, making sure everything is on point before it goes out the door. Yeah, I tell you, you know, there, there's an old commercial that they had on television called uh, where, where Ford, Ford, Ford Motor Company said quality is job one. Quality is job one here at Clovernut from the very beginning to the end process before our patrons get their magazines and so forth. We go over those things at least four times. Before. Great. Um, the next thing that I would like to talk about, we talked a little bit about work. Now I would like to ask you a little bit about your journey. I would like to know, um, have you been blind or visually impaired since birth or is it something that came along your journey? And uh, you know, just share what you feel comfortable talking about. Sure. I was born with the condition called RLF and it's a fancy title for actually having too much oxygen in my incubator. I was born premature. Mm -hmm. Two months premature, to be more precise. As time went by, um, my left eye, the vision in my left eye was nil. And as time went by, the vision in my right eye became less and less, partly due to a sympathetic eye condition, which is not well known. But the final blow was glaucoma. And I represent 2% of the people in the world who had glaucoma and did not know it. My pressure was as high as possible, up to 80, and but no one knew because I never exhibited the symptoms. Mostly there's pain that comes in that particular area when you know that your eye pressure is a little bit too high, but I didn't experience that. So that's what happened. Glaucoma and came and took the rest of the vision in my right eye away. Wow. Um, you know, thank you for sharing that with us. I mean, I have known you for some years, but, you know, I, I never knew that, um, you know, I never knew exactly what it was that caused that. I love the fact that you still live every day and you still exemplify what it is to be a man despite being blind. Uh, do you have light perception? I have no light perception whatsoever. And I have to throw something in that really has nothing to do with blindness here. Uh, at the time I left Internal Revenue Service, I had a condition, uh, I had a tumor in my left ear, and they operated on the tumor, and they couldn't save the hearing. So I'm not only totally blind, but I'm totally deaf in one ear. So it's it has been a challenge ongoing.
thing through my life. And, uh, but I'm coming along very well, very well. Well, I appreciate you being vulnerable enough to talk about that. And hopefully your story, how you do live with being partially deaf and how you live with being totally blind, but you still carry yourself as a man and you still expect to be treated like everyone else. I, I love it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, the next question that I would like to ask you about is if you could pick one thing, just one thing that you would like people in the world to know about those who are blind and visually impaired, what is one thing that you would say? It sounds simple to say that we want to be treated just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. The fact is, is that we really can't be treated like everyone else unless those people who are out there helping us know what's going on with us and actually know not only how to help us, but to know how to let us know how to help them. Mm -hmm because it is a two-way street and it's mostly it's been one way and it's not been a good way. Mm -hmm. Visually impaired people have been ostracized for so many years. Put in corners, put in workshops. We can do it all. Mm -hmm. I work for Internal Revenue Service. I've been doing such things as helping people on the phones when they come and call in about their taxes. Mm -hmm. I've helped employers with their employment taxes. I've helped with partnerships and corporations. I've been involved with um, allowing people to have a penalty excuse in excess of $10,000. So as a visually impaired person, I was able to do just as much as my sighted counterparts, and it was all a team effort, a team effort. I love it. This is why, you know, I, I uh, started off at the top saying, um, you know, an exceptional man. Uh, that That is great. I, I absolutely love it. Um, the last question that I would like to ask you about is, give us one fun fact about you. Um, if I had to think about it, I think the, the most fun fact about me is that I love to gather knowledge and it kind of, exchange that knowledge with people. There are things that I do on my iPhone. There are fun facts on my iPhone that I look up. I'm always looking at things such as like holidays today, like for as for our interview today, today is a homemade cookie day. Uh -huh. And today is also World Smile Day. And that, those kinds of things I really like and, and, and enjoy sharing with people. Mm -hmm. And the last thing about the fun facts is that I love to play games. There are games on the iPhone for the, for the visually impaired, mm -hmm. and they are a lot of fun, and there's a lot of competition, and there's just so much fun with it, too. Cool, wow. Um, thanks for sharing that with us, and thank you for sitting down with me today to have this conversation. And as you all know, as I stated before, this is October, it is Meet the Blind Month, and we are doing this interview, um, and, um, we are doing these interviews in order to gain insight on those who are blind, those who are visually impaired, and so that you can get to know a little bit about us and in return, equip you with more information and understand that we all aren't the same, that everyone has a different walk of life Everyone has traveled a different road, but at the end of the day, we are all people and we all expect to be treated equally.